What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video, we have a very powerful triple shadow, triple water team here in the above legend elo range from Spooky Mafia 91, Shadow Empoleon, Shadow Polyrath, and Shadow Quagsire. Very excited to see what the potential of this team is, so let me know down in the comments what you think about it. Shout out to Spooky Mafia 91 for sharing these battles with us. Congrats on Legend. Let's go and get right into it. All right, getting into the first battle here, we have Empoleon on the lead versus Carbink. Well, that's, that's a very good lead if I do say so myself. This whole team is loving it, and a swap out now into Mandibuzz. So they can easily stay in here with Empoleon if they want to uh, because they do have great matchups in the back against the Carbink with the Polyrath and the Shadow Quagsire there. I mean, it's it's a triple team to beat uh, to beat a uh, Carbink, which is obviously a very popular Pokemon at this ELO range as we will see a swap out now into Polyrath hoping to go for the counter farm down. Now, will they be able to do it in time? Mandibuzz can get to Aerial Aces pretty quick and uh, it does about 50% HP. So this is gonna be a close one if they can get the counter down. No, I don't think they're gonna be able to. We will see the Icy Wind be thrown here. This is gonna be knocking out Mandibuzz, ensuring they maintain switch advantage. And now we get to see what Pokemon number three is, unless Carbink is trying to back come back in. No, it's gonna be Annihilate. So this is actually gonna be a tough battle. Annihilate has the opportunity to sweep this game if it gets a Night Slash boost. Now, obviously, Icy Wind is gonna be applying a debuff here to the Annihilate so that Quagsire has a better time. But honestly, if Annihilate just goes straight Night Slash and gets a boost, it might be over. And that's the power that Annihilate has and why it's so good in Go Battle League. But a Shadow Ball actually lands through a No Shield. And now Quagsire's in a very tough position where they're going to have to throw these Aqua Tails in order to knock it out. Annihilate still has a shield remaining. And they go for the first one here. This is going to be, I mean, it's going to get the, uh, the Annihilate low, but it's not going to be enough to knock out. They do give up the final shield. They're loading up on energy and the opponent actually swaps out at the last second into Carbink, hoping to catch the charge move. But unfortunately for them, Empoleon is just able to get to double Hydro Cannons right here. This is going to be perfect as Annihilate does not have two Night Slashes ready to go. Um, so it's going to have to throw a charge move into Empoleon in order to knock it out. And even then, Empoleon might win charge attack priority. But they go for counter anyway, so Annihilate will be going down. And that is going to be a good game, very well played. For as hard of a counter as they had on the lead... Now, Nihilate could have swept right there. Good battle. All right, moving into the next one. Let's see how this battle goes. I mean, triple water, right? It's always strong. They have great coverages against all the typings and uh, great resistances when you pair different typings with it. But we have Empoleon versus... <laughs> all right, there is fairies above 3000 elo range and there are Gligars as well. This is obviously a very great lead in mid-game Pokemon to be facing off against because of the damage from Hydro Cannon. Now, will we see a swap out into the Quagsire? There it is. There's the swap out, hoping to catch the charge move, but unfortunately, they didn't. Now, obviously, Gligar has to throw in this situation as a dig will uh, do a good amount of damage, but Aqua Tail is going to be able to fire right back, and this actually might just be enough to knock out considering it's Shadow on Shadow. Oh, it's not Shadow on Shadow, and that was barely not enough. So, oh, Quagsire is able to get the charge attack priority. That is critical for this matchup. Had the opponent thrown the Aerial Ace before, I don't think uh, Quagsire would have been able to go for the uh, charge attack priority Aqua Tail right here, which is now going to be forcing or getting the knockout in the mid game. Now, Ninetales is going to come back in and is going to be Charm Ninetales as well. Quacks are not able to get to that Aqua Tail. Empoleon needs to wait out Switch Clock. This is very smart. Their Polyrath is not available for a swap yet, so they need to make sure they wait that out. Then they come in with Empoleon, and now we see the final Pokemon is going to be a Crocolore. So, Empoleon's going to be able to get the final shield of this game. Polyrath is going to be coming in. And we will see the Scald damage overtake here. But what you don't want to do is sleep on a Crocolore because Disarming Voice 
is a lot of super effective damage, but Polyrath is able to hang on and get to this Scald in time. This will be charge attack priority here, and Crocolore is going to be taking it, so we're going to see a shield on that Polyrath to stop the damage. And then Charmalolan Ninetales is going to come in and get one fast move worth of energy, but I don't think it's going to be enough, as Shadow and Polyon is, uh, is going to be able to get to a, a Hydro Cannon pretty quickly. Actually, it might. If they get a Weather Ball right here... No, they just get the fast move down. Who am I kidding? Napoleon is going to take in. That is going to be a good game. Very well played. Well, tell you what. Empoleon is loving life when it comes to um, these, uh, these fairy leads. Oh, a little glitch right there. All right, we're going into the next battle. Let's see here. Man, Empoleon, loving life as uh, we will see this next battle. It is going to be be another fairy. Empoleon versus Ferrothorn. Okay, not a fairy. Tough Pokemon to be facing off against for this team, but not unbeatable, as they do have Dropek as a great answer. They also have Poliwrath with counter damage, and even the Quagsire's uh, Aqua Tails can do a decent amount of chip damage. Now they get shield baited there with a mirror shot, which is very unfortunate, as we will see a double drill pack be thrown, the first one coming through. I mean, two is going to be enough to knock out. As, uh, yeah, the Ferrothorn decides to shield. They don't get to the second one in time before Power Whip comes through, so Empoleon's going to go ahead and shield this one. And it's another bait! Another mirror shot bait! That is so unfortunate for them, as they will be able to get to this drill pack, and now they know they're about to be hit, which is going to be tough, because this Power Whip is probably going to be enough to knock out. And... Oh, yeah, they, they are going to get hit right here. This is unfortunate. Hopefully, they can hang on. I don't think they do, though. Power Whip. No. Nope. Boom. See ya. Polyrath now going to be coming in. It's going to be hit by a Power Whip as well. This is going to do so much damage. But if Ferrothorn's the only counter to a Quagsire, Quagsire might, in fact, sweep. But they don't. They throw Mirror Shot. They didn't get there in time. Mandibuzz is now swapping in. This is a huge momentum shift as Icy Wind is going to be able to do super effective damage and apply that debuff. And uh, Quagsire could come out onto the field if they want to read or um, try to catch the uh, Aerial Ace and read that maybe Polyrath is a better answer for whatever's in the back. But Aerial Ace here is going to be landing. Polyrath is going to overload a bit on energy and now throw the Icy Wind before the second Aerial Ace can come through. This isn't going to be enough to knock out, unfortunately. But it, what it will do is get the Mandibuzz low enough so that Quagsire can come in and farm down. The question is, what is that final Pokemon? Can Quagsire handle it here? Mudshot going to be able to get an aggressive farm down. That is a lot of free energy here for the Shadow Quagsire. We know Ferrothorn is low and Aqua Tail will be enough to take it out. Dark Pulse does nothing because of the Icy Wind debuff. Stone Edge is almost ready to go. What is the final Pokemon? Will we see a Peekaboo catch? Let's find out. The Ferrothorn actually decides to come in. They go for the Aqua Tail right away. This is going to be knocking out the Ferrothorn, which is why I said Shadow Quagsire still has some play. And then we get to see final Pokemon is going to be the Pancake, is going to be the Glass Boy. I like to call it a Glass Boy. Sand or ground, sand and uh, electricity, um, uh, the electric typing. Glass Boy, not Mud Boy. Mud Boy is water ground. You guys can disagree with me all you want, but the fact still remains that the Pancake is a Glass Boy. And uh, this is looking to be a good battle. Is that going to be double Mud Bomb here? From, uh, from Stunfisk? There's one. Oh, it was! Charge attack priority, though, goes to the Quagsire. And that is going to be a good game, as they're going to be able to get the knockout here with the Aqua Tail. Very close battle. Alright. Moving into the next one. So, yeah. Uh, Glass Boy. Ground Electric, right? It makes sense. Don't, don't dispute facts, everyone. Mud boys are water ground, because when you mix water with uh, dirt, you get mud, right? Mud boys, glass boys. Okay, enough with that. All right, moving into the next battle. Let's see. These are some uh, long cues for waiting for battle starting. Let me see if I can jump us ahead a little bit. There we go. 
Empoleon on the lead versus Shadow Dragonair. So Steelwing going to do a lot of damage in this matchup and you really like it on the lead. We do see a swap out into the Feraligator. So this is still a good situation to be in as we see a counter swap into Poliwrath hoping for the Hydro. Actually, they're going to be resisting all the charge moves here, which is actually perfect because Hydro Cannon and Crunch. Actually, Hydro Cannon still does a good amount of damage. And now they're going to have to shield this next one and they might be able to get the farm down. Hopefully they can so that Icy Wind debuffs can be applied to the Dragonair on the back end. One two yeah they get it they get, will get the farm down there dragonair can come back in but they know that they have to shield the icy wind but we might just see pokemon number three if it's got a nope it is going to be coming in so actually double icy wind is going to be ready to go this is why polyrath is so powerful on the back end of a lot of mid game matchups is the debuffs and damage that it can apply right at the last second thanks to the Icy Wind debuff from charge move number one, they were able to get to charge move number two. Boom! Oh, it didn't knock out. Almost knocked out. And we will see uh, Empoleon come in and go for the, uh, oh, Melmetal gonna be coming in. All right. Well, Double Hydro Cannon is gonna be putting in some work. Melmetal, haven't seen this Pokemon used in a long time. It used to be meta back in the day, like the first, I would say first like seven seasons, Melmetal was actually pretty strong as uh, Hydro Cannon is going to be landing, Quagsire is going to be swapped in, and this is going to be a clean sweep and a surrender. So that is going to be a good game, very well played. All right. Moving into the next one. We have Q-Time. That's all right. What do you guys think so far about this team? I'm pretty impressed with it. Obviously, Annihilate is something that could be tough, especially if it goes for Night Slash boosts, or gets a boost with Night Slash, right, and goes for the baits. Um, so that could be tough, especially on the back end. But uh, overall, even Shadow Magnezone, I think, would have a tough time with this team. If you consider Polyrath as counter, uh, Quagsire is doing is resisting the Volt Switches, right? And Empoleon can hit really hard with the Hydro Cannon. So there's a lot of play to be had even against the electric types like we saw against the Stunfisk, like we may see against Magnezone. It does well against the Carbinks. Yeah, we're going to get back into the Q. Q times at the end. I'll go ahead and fast forward a bit. All right, here we go. We found a battle. We have Empoleon versus Bronzong. This is spicy right here. Okay. Empoleon can still do well in this situation as we do see a swap out actually into Diggersby. And the uh, Polyrath is going to be coming in right away. Now, Polyrath might want to go for the Icy Wind, but they actually opt to uh, to overload on energy and shield. Got to protect themselves from the potential Hyper Beam, which was thrown in Polyrath now in a great position where they can easily go for the Icy Wind here. This is going to be knocking out the Diggersby. The opponent is wanting to bait out Polyrath so they can farm down, but Polyrath has so much energy, or it's wanting to bait out fighters. Polyrath has so much energy that a uh, double scald is completely a viable option in this matchup unless they throw the Psy Shock and look at that damage from Scald. They might actually be able to go for an Icy Wind, which is going to be worth it if they can get the debuff. Now, Scald did apply the attack debuff and the Psy Shock will be thrown here. So Polyrath is going to let it go as it will get knocked out. And now Empoleon's going to be coming in and it's going to be a Jellicent in the back. This is going to be a tough game to try to handle, as a, but this is Bubble Jellicent, which actually helps out the Empoleon matchup instead of the Hex. But regardless, Shadow Ball and resistance to the uh, to the fast and charge moves here is going to be kind of tough, as they do get baited with a shield or with a Surf, as uh, Dropek now going to be coming through. This is where Jellicent's going to have to give up the final shield, and maybe Quagsire can close it out with a Stone Edge. And they decide to stay in, going to be forcing the energy here. They Oh, they wanted to get that swap out to catch the Shadow Ball. But unfortunately, they didn't get it in time. Switch Clock is coming back up. Boom! For the opponent. And now, this is going to be a matter of if they can catch the Stone Edge on Bronzong. Oh, there's the swap. Beautifully timed by the opponent, but beautifully held. Great composure here from the Shadow Quagsire as Aqua Tail is going to be knocking out and now we get to see the stone edge what a beautiful play you guys saw the win condition for both sides holding energy and catching the charge move and that was beautifully done boom see ya 
that is going to be a good game very well played that was the final battle somewhat of a shorter video today but doing 5-0 right there with the triple water team above legend that is absolutely amazing shout out to spooky mafia uh 91 make sure i get the number right uh for sharing these battles with us congrats on legend and getting 31 47 right there and uh oh they jumped around right here okay uh, really good showcase of this team very powerful faced off against a lot of meta pokemon some unique and tough situations that we saw but they were able to overcome with great gameplay so hope you guys enjoyed today's video and like always thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one